Hello viewers. In this video, I'm going to discuss about green chemistry. In my part one of my video, I gave the introduction of green chemistry. In the second part of my video, I discuss the first and second principle of green chemistry. In this video, I will be discussing the third and fourth principle of green chemistry in detail. So let us start with the third principle of green chemistry. This principle is about prevention, minimization of hazardous products. It states wherever practicable, synthetic method should be designed to use and generate substances that possess little or not, no toxicity to human health and the environment. Here, toxic substances, they are risky, they possess hazard if they are and their exposure cause risk. So risk is described by a formula here where risk is stated as a function of hazard and exposure. Let us see the definition of each of these three terms. First, let us see what risk is up. Risk is the probability that harm will occur. And risk is the possibility of a harmful event arising from exposure to a chemical or physical agent under specific conditions. The other term hazard, it refers to the inherent properties of a substance that make it capable of causing harm to human health or the environment. The third term here is exposure. It describes both the amount of and the frequency with which a chemical substance reaches a person, group of people or the environment. Now let us see how a person can be exposed to a substance. The various routes for exposure are breathing, skin contact, injection into the skin or by swallowing. So there are various approaches to reduce risk one way to reduce risk is to minimize hazard and the other way is to minimize exposure. Traditionally, risk is reduced by limiting the exposure by some physical or chemical means. If there is no exposure to a chemical, there is no risk. Safe exposure levels are determined by threshold dose below which no harm will occur to an exposed population. The other way to minimize risk is to reduce hazard. Here hazard covers several aspects such as toxicity, flammability, explosion potential and environmental persistence. Now let us see one example where we can reduce risk by minimizing exposure. We know that certain chemicals such as pesticides they are needed for food production. They are very essential. They are toxic, but if we use them, keeping the exposure minimum, then the risk is can be minimized. So here we can see if exposure is kept low to a pesticides, we can reduce the risk caused by it. Another example is the risk due to sunburn. A person's getting risk of getting burned due to sunlight, it will depend upon how strong the sun radiations are. So sun can be considered here in ha as a hazard. The other um, condition is how much sun the person is being exposed to and over what period of time. If the exposure is minimized by wearing protection such as sunscreen, the risk can be minimized. So here we can see we can reduce risk either by minimizing exposure or by redu reducing the hazard. Let us see pollution prevention hierarchy. The Pollution Prevention Act of 1990, which was given by United States, it created a national policy to have pollution prevented at the source wherever possible. This law gave a hierarchy management to control pollution, the waste management hierarchy indicates an order of preference to reduce and manage waste and it is represented diagrammatically in the form of a pyramid like this. So 
the most preferred options are at the top to the less preferable ones at the bottom the preferred option is to prevent pollution at its source but if the waste is generated the preferred method is recycling followed by burning for energy recovery then treatment and the last method is disposal waste management can be done by either of these means the most preferred one is source reduction it includes activities that eliminate or reduce the generation of chemical waste next is this recycling it includes the recovery of a toxic chemical in waste for reuse if both the strategies are not possible then energy recovery is the next option it includes combustion of toxic chemicals in waste to generate heat or electricity next less prefer one is the treatment method it includes destruction of a toxic chemical in the waste and if none of these options are possible then the last possibility is disposal of the waste now let us come to the next principle fourth principle of clean chemistry this principle states that chemical products should be designed to preserve efficacy of function while reducing toxicity so whenever we are designing a chemical we should preserve its function its utility should be there however it should be least toxic so while designing we should keep in mind to preserve its function but to reduce this toxicity so if there is any functionality in the molecule which is causing toxicity we should try to remove or change that moiety so that toxicity can be minimized there are certain laws and regulations which talk about the toxicity due to chemicals and their control the first one is reach here reach stands for registration evaluation authorization and restriction of chemicals it came into force in june 2007 it is a regulation of the european union and adopted to improve the protection of human health and the environment from the risk that can be posed by chemicals this law compels manufacturers to provide detailed information on chemicals that are manufactured marketed or imported so according to this law the manufacturers have to give all the information about a chemical which they are manufacturing they are marketing or they are important so here the structural alerts the structural features of a molecules become very important since the structure of a molecule gives indication an idea about its toxicology and it gives us information how we can design new safer chemicals and how hazard can be prevented so thus to limit the toxicity or to minimize the toxicity of a molecule its structural features are very important another regulation is the cosh c o s h h it stands for control of substances hazardous to health regulation this law requires employers to control substances that are hazardous to health as reach is a very broad ranging regulation and its requirement encompasses occupational health and safety environmental protection and consumer protection but cosh only focuses on health it requires all employers to assess the risk to employees health created by work with hazardous substances and identify the necessary controls so these are two main regulations which talk about control of hazard and toxicity of molecules now when we are designing a molecule we have to keep in mind its structure and the features which are there which can cause toxicity there are various products which are synthesized they come in various categories like dyes paints adhesive or they can be a pharmaceutical compound 
We assess them by way them their various properties like their color, tensile strength, cross-linking potential, and their biological activity such as anti-tumor activity or other any other biological activity. So when we design a chemical, we can do structural modification in it so that toxicity is reduced and the function and performance of the molecule is ensured. So there is a correlation between chemical structure and toxicity. And if we know this correlation and we can we know the functionality which is related to toxicity, we can avoid toxicity or minimize or eliminate toxicity if we know the functionality responsible for this. So there are various chemical strategies to avoid toxicity of a molecule. We can do various alteration changes in the molecule considering its features like stereochemistry, electron density, some structural element in the molecule which can be metabolized and steric impediment. Let us, we will see examples of these strategies one by one and how toxicity is related to each of these. So first let us see how toxicity and stereochemistry are related. So we'll discuss this with respect to the thalidomide drug. Thalidomide drug came in 1957 in Germany as an over-the-counter drug. By 1960, it was marketed in 46 countries. This drug was given to pregnant women to quell morning sickness. Later on, it was found that children who are born to women taking this drug, they have horrific birth defects such as shortened arms and hands, which are not functional. So, this drug has teratogenic effect. Now, the question is, why is it so? So, this is the structure of thalidomide and it has a chiral center. So, it exists in two forms. One is the R isomer and other is the S isomer. So, because of this two isomers and both the isomers have different stereochemistry, one of the isomer, the R isomer has sedative effect which is used as a drug. However, the other isomer, S isomer is teratogenic and it led, led to birth defects. As when the drug was marketed initially, it was sold as a mixture of two isomers. So that's why as the streak chemistry was not considered. So this type of tragedy happened because both the isomers have different biological activity. So here comes the role of stereochemistry in determining and toxicity. So if you know the stereochemistry and how stereochemistry and its activity are related, so we can avoid toxicity by knowing the stereochemistry of a molecule if it has any relation with the activity. The other factor which can have or, or lead to, or which can avoid toxicity is the electronic property of a molecule. Now here you can see halothione, isoflurane and desflurane. These three compounds are anesthetic. They have anesthetic effect. Now the difference is in halothione there is a bromine atom. In isoflurane and desflurane this fluorine is replaced by a difluoromethoxic group. So here this is an example of modulation of chemical reactivity through change in electronic properties. So the electronic properties of this molecule are changed by changing this bromine with a difluoromethoxy group and in turn its biological activity is changed. Halothione has the highest incidence of hepatotoxicity that is drug induced liver injury as compared to the other two molecules isoflurane and desflurane. The other two molecules because of presence of difluoromethoxy group, they are less bio bioactively activated and because of which their 
drug induced liver injury that is the hepatotoxic effect is less so if we change the electronic properties of our molecules its toxicity can be avoided as can be seen from these three molecules now another thing how toxicity and steric impediment are interrelated this can be clear, uh, cleared from the example of ibuprofenic and ibu ibuprofen so you can see ibuprofenic and ibuprofen both are anti inflammatory drugs however ibuprofenic was withdrawn in 1998 again due to severe hepatotoxicity its effect on liver liver injury if this a uh, two position of the acetic acid moiety is replaced by a methyl group a chiral center is generated here so if a group is introduced at two position some steric control is there then this molecule ibuprofen is much safer than ibuprofenic and it is still widely used as a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug analgesic and as anti pyretic drug so we can see steric impediment also have a role in controlling toxicity of molecules another example is effect of substituents these are two molecules one is diclofenac and other is lumiracoxib both differ in the substituents present on them in diclofenac this chlorine is substituted by a fluorine and the hydrogen is replaced by a methyl group here both have anti inflammatory activity diclofenac came in medical use in 1988 whereas lumiracoxib it was approved for medical use in 2003 their structures differ only at these two positions one at the chlorine and fluorine and other the hair the hydrogen is being replaced substituted by a methyl group however lumiracoxib has been withdrawn from the market because of its liver toxicity whereas diclofenac is still widely used as a safe pain killer so again substituents also have effect on toxicity so if we know the structure of a molecule and know what factors are responsible for toxicity we can avoid toxicity by altering the structure of the molecule this is what is stated by the fourth principle of green chemistry now let us see some questions based on these principles the first question is what year was the pollution prevention act passed and what hierarchy did it establish another question which is how does green chemistry approach risk reduction Next question is what are the disadvantages of reducing risk through minimizing exposure Explain the terms used in Pollution Prevention Act of 1990 by US EPA Next question is discuss a few chemical strategies to avoid toxicity Some books which can be referred for green chemistry First book is Green Chemistry an introductory text by Mike Lancaster Second book is Green Chemistry Theory and Practice by Paul T. Anastas and John Werner. Third book is an introductory text on green chemistry for undergraduate students by Indu Takasidwani and Rakesh Kumar Sharma. So here are the links of the first two parts of this green chemistry lecture series. The part one introduction to green chemistry. Part two is about principles of green chemistry where the first and second principles are discussed. This video uh, was about principle 3 and principle 4 of green chemistry. Thank you. Like and subscribe for upcoming educational videos. Thank you.